Stefan, could you give us some advice on finding and taking on contract work while also employed as a developer full time? Yeah, just, you know, just when you take on a piece of uh, freelance work, contract work, just be transparent, you know, in terms of uh, figure out how much can you reasonably uh, do per week in terms of work? How many hours can you put into it? So, you know, let's say you say I can do reasonably 10 hours a week and you see a job that's going to take you 20 hours. Then you bid, you know, make sure you, you give yourself a padding, maybe you know, 25, 30 hours and just be transparent. Say, listen, I'm booked. It's going to take this many more hours and just you know, play it that way. Uh, do you think programming is slow for learners? Because I am really slow learning, a slow learner. I like to get deeper into any part of the language, for example, when started, when started learn JavaScript, I got stuck with prototype. Yeah, yeah. See, what you got to do when you're learning something, anything new, you don't want to get stuck on one thing. You want to just keep moving forward through the program because you can do, I talk about that. I, I have two methods, learning methods that I, I, I teach that you can take, the one pass and the two pass method. So the one pass method, you go through the material and yeah, sometimes you get stuck in areas. You don't, you don't get stuck on something. You want to just make progress. What you'll find is if you continue to make progress, even if there's areas where you're not quite sure, uh, by making progress, going through the material, <coughs> oftentimes it will, it will start, one day you wake up, you go, oh, now I understand. You see, that's where I talked about early in discussion how your brain is going to have to make new neural connections when you're learning something new, especially coding, because it's a new way of thinking. So, yeah, you don't want to get bogged down in anything. You can always come back to it. Here's the other thing. You want to write code as much as possible. Even if you don't understand the code, you'd be amazed at how helpful writing the code, just a little code every day, one, three lines of JavaScript code a day will help you to really start uh, improving your understanding, conceptual understanding of all this stuff. 10 years experience, junior dev apply now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's something I talked about in other videos. You see these weird uh, job listings where they want to, uh, they need you know, to know everything since the dawn of time. And they say, junior, experience, junior developer job. These people are a little weird. Any comments on job freelance opportunities for Python, Django, backend web developers versus Java Spring Boot? I think when you get into the uh, freelance world, what you're going to see is that uh, PHP and JavaScript dominate. Uh, you're not going to see too much freelance Java Spring because Java Spring is typically for enterprise, large organizations. Uh, they'll be using contractors uh, through contracting firms. Typically, uh, Python, Django, again, they're out there, but you, for every Python Django job, you'll probably see uh, 500, 1,000 PHP jobs. It's just the nature of the market. But don't take my word for it. Just go look. Go look. I think there's probably more opportunity for freelance now because I think a lot of, a lot of people are, are, are thinking, hey, I'm going to start a business because of COVID. Um, but generally, they're both good options. It's just it's a personality thing. It's it's like, do you like uh, SUVs or sports cars? Let's talk about that for a brief moment. Startups. There's a couple ways you could approach building a business. You can self finance out of cash flow, or if you got a bunch of cash flow in there. But it's your money, and when it's your money, you might make decisions you wouldn't make if you had a much larger pool money and your risk was lower. So although there's a lot of trouble raise, there's a lot of trouble and headaches uh, raising money from outside investors. But if you raise, I don't know, a million bucks or two million bucks or half a million bucks to start, or even you know a quarter million, and because it's a shared risk situation here, where you got the outside investors risking, you're risking your time, and you you perhaps will move quicker and spend money more quickly, as long as you don't go crazy, to speed up the projects. And sometimes that's necessary. Is Swell Bun the future? Uh, probably not. In terms of like, first of all, I wouldn't be so concerned about what the future is, because if you're a competent developer, you can just pivot to one technology to the next pretty simply. So that's number one. Number two, um, 
If you look at the list of the top 10 languages today, C, C++, Java, PHP, uh, Python, uh, JavaScript, uh, SQL, SQL is not a programming language, but a language. These are all 25-year-old, 30-year-old languages. You know, all industries go through, hey, we got 69 likes. It's not bad. Uh, I appreciate the thumbs up. All industries go through a, a, a cycle of quick innovation in the in early days and then it plateaus off and then you don't see too much change. You saw that with the, the, the development world, especially the web world. In the 90s through to uh, early, mid 2000s, you saw a rapid change, but it slowly slowed down. So in the, first, in the 90s, it was crazy how quickly the technology changed. It was, it was crazy fast. And then we hit around 2005 after the web standards movement settled in place. Got pretty stable. By 2012, 13, 14, it was uh, very stable. Things have not changed in terms of coding and development in the web stack and all, since, I say, 212, 214. It's pretty damn stable. Uh, what has changed in that time frame was uh, DevOps and uh, sophisticated hosting options. But that's about it, so I wouldn't be so concerned about that anymore. Any tips on finding clients as a freelancer? I gave you some tips there, local small business. Uh, usually local small business owners will know other local small business owners. You do a nice job for them, they'll tell their friends, you know. One thing you could do is, that, here's a trick. You go on Google Maps, you type in coffee shop in your area and you find all the coffee shops and you click to see if they have a website, if they have a really old website, go see them. Say, hey, you got, you know, I, I, am, I saw your website, maybe we could update it. Start knocking on doors. The, the first few clients are always the hardest in freelancing, but then you'll be fine, trust me. It's usually like this, you know, no clients, no clients. You get one client, no clients, no clients. You get another client, and all of a sudden you got all these clients and you don't know what to do with them all. That's the typical pattern in the freelance game. Hey Steph, what do you do if you destroy customer data or really effed up? Oof. Well, if you don't have backups, you should, uh, then uh, you fess up if you have to. What can you do? It's happened. Uh, that's one of the advantages of uh, VPSs. Fully managed VPS is what I recommend. Fully managed VPS. I don't think developers should be provisioning servers and backing up, running backups and configuring. Nah, the VPS should handle that. And if you have a decent VPS, you know, I can call my VPS. I say, restore this data, this table here at this time step, and they just go, Bloop, and they do it. I don't have to do it. So yeah, always have lots of backups. Plus one on burnout. I used to feel guilty for taking time off. Do you gotta take time off? The, uh, the irony is by taking time off and pacing yourself, you're gonna be, in the end, far more productive. Far more productive. Gia Beats, I love your videos. Well, thank you. Welcome to the stream. Not giving up, yeah. If you find you're, you know, you're learning code, for example, or you're working on a project, and you're like, oh, I can't take it anymore. Take a break, take a break. You have to take, take a few hours off, take a day off, it's okay. Take a day off. As long as you do a little bit every day on a consistent basis, it'd be good. It is important to really focus when you are studying software developer, even if you just a couple of hours. Even if you just 20, 30 minutes a day, that goes a long way. What are good investments? Number one rule of investing, be highly diversified. You can look that up. Number two rule of, divest, of investing, invest money that you don't need for many years, right? Number three rule of investing, never sell. Take your time, like Warren Buffett talks about this and I can confirm he's right now. If you get one or two good investments in a year, that's plenty. That's a lot. If you get three or four good investments in your life, you're set for life. So you want to take your time. You want to take your time. You want to be highly diversified. Why do you want to be highly diversified? Because you never know what's going to go, what's going to work or not. And if you're too concentrated in a particular investment, if it starts going down, you're going to start having heart attacks. And you might sell because it's temporarily going down. And because you're having a heart attack because you got too much invested in that. 
and then it pops back up and you miss the action. I know somebody who's done that more than once. So don't make my mistake. Highly diversified so you can sleep well at night and just stay in there. What's the, um, what's the old rule of investment? It's to become, to be successful in investing, it's not timing the market, meaning you, it's not about trying to find the perfect time to buy an asset and sell an asset. There's this illusion that you could buy it at the right time and sell it at the right time. It's time in the market, not timing the market that makes all the difference. I can tell you from personal experience, I have literally lost, and I'm not exaggerating, millions and millions of dollars by selling investments too soon. You know, there's no question about that. If I would have did nothing, I'd be way ahead in particular investments. So yeah, it's like I tell people, um, if I reflected on all the mistakes I've made in my financial, my career, in my personal life, out of self-respect, I would have to kill myself. So what I try to do here in the mentoring program, and I try, that's a joke, by the way, I try to transfer my, my experience to you guys so you don't make, you don't have to spend 10, 20 years, 30 years figuring out what took, you know, what I had to spend years trying to figure out. Soft skills are hard. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, soft skills at the end of the day comes down to a very balanced psychology. At the end of the day, people talk about all the superficial stuff on the top of it, but at the end of the day, it's about having a good balanced psychology, a good relaxed mindset.